Cuba. While it may appear to be a beautiful tropical island with white sandy beaches, it is actually a country living in poverty. Due to the fact that Cuba has been living under the communist dictatorship of Fidel Castro and now his brother Raul Castro for the past 50 years. In 1898, after the U.S. had driven the Spanish out of Cuba in the Spanish-American War, the Spanish gave Cuba to the U.S. However, the U.S. granted Cuba their independence under the conditions that the U.S. could intervene in the country's affairs and be granted a perpetual lease on its naval base at Guantanamo Bay. The U.S. had a number of sugar companies in Cuba, so they wanted to protect these companies by having input in Cuba's government. This partnership lasted up until 1959, when Fidel Castro and the rebels overthrew the Cuban government and took power. Although Richard Nixon invited Fidel Castro to the U.S. shortly after the regime, the U.S. was skeptical of him due to his communist ideals. The next year, in 1960, Castro had nationalized the private U.S. companies in Cuba and taxed them so heavily that the U.S. exports were cut in half in two years. After going back and forth with minor trade restrictions, in 1962, President John F. Kennedy issued the permanent embargo on Cuba. The U.S. would not export any products to Cuba and no travel would be allowed between the countries. The embargo was placed on Cuba due to the fact that Castro's Cuba had close ties to the Soviet Union. By the U.S. placing the embargo on Cuba, the U.S. hoped that Cuba would realize that it cannot live without the U.S. and therefore break its ties with Russia and resume trade. However, Cuba did not look back to the United States but rather formed a closer alliance with the Soviet Union. This alliance caused the U.S. government to launch a number of secret missions to harm Fidel Castro and the Cuban government in any way possible. These missions ranged from exploding seashells to dusting Fidel Castro's shoes to make his beard fall out. However, all of these attempts failed and made the Cuban government hate the U.S. even more. The climax of the tension between the U.S. and Cuba occurred in 1962 when U.S. spy planes discovered that the Soviet Union was building missile bases in Cuba. This led to a frightening nuclear face-off between the U.S. and the Soviet Union, also known as the Cuban Missile Crisis. Luckily, after only 12 days, the U.S. and Soviets reached a secret deal where the U.S. would move its nuclear missiles in Turkey and the Soviets would move their nuclear missiles in Cuba. Although this problem was quickly resolved, it has taken decades for the U.S. to forgive Cuba for allowing missiles to be placed in such close proximity to the U.S. The no-travel, no-trade embargo lasted for almost 50 years without major adjustments until President Obama began making changes starting in 2009. He started by allowing for Cuban Americans to send unlimited funds to family members in Cuba and allow unlimited travel for religious and educational purposes. Major changes occurred in late 2014 when Obama announced that the U.S. and Cuba would be restoring diplomatic ties and reopening their embassies in each other's capitals. Although Obama hoped to move toward normality, Congress did not agree with Obama and vows to uphold the economic embargo. In recent months, commercial flights have been set up between the U.S. and Cuba, so the travel restrictions between the two countries are almost non-existent. However, the economic embargo is still in effect. The U.S.'s economic embargo against Cuba has undoubtedly destroyed Cuba's economy as they relied on almost all of their imports from the U.S. To this day, almost all cars on the road in Cuba are run down jalopies from the 1950s because the U.S. has not traded with Cuba since then. Also, Cuba has roughly the same number of phone lines it did today in 1950. The U.S.'s relationship with Cuba before Castro was beneficial for both parties, but when Castro's socialist government took over, it destroyed Cuba economically and socially. It has taken 50 years for the U.S. to begin re-establishing relations with its once close trade ally.